Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 11. The past would encounter, Zhu King and Shi Tu Ping asked at the same time. Sir Yan Ming continued, the four of us were carrying rare wine. Some accompanying dishes and our swords to the peak of the mountain, and it was early in the morning, just as the sun began to rise when we found that under a large willow tree at the peak, there was already someone else who occupied the area. It was long white-haired old beggar, whose face was rosy, with vigor, lying casually on a rock platform under the tree. As sunlight touched his body, we felt as if we saw an immortal. Sir Yanming smiled with his eyes and slowly talked. As if he was reliving that particular memory, only his tattered clothes were not a match to his appearance because they were those of a beggar, so we thought that perhaps he was an elder from the beggar sect, but he did not carry a pouch with him. When that old beggar saw us approaching, he asked if we knew martial arts, we nodded in agreement, and he asked again if we had wine and meat, we simply nodded again, he then told us to bring the wine and delicacies out, that day, it was I who was carrying the food. And I followed his instructions without much thinking, seeing the food, his eyes gleamed brightly which was uncharacteristic of our image of him, as he took our food, he ravenously wolfed it all down without hesitation, and surprisingly, the four of us just stared dumbly as we watched him do. So until all our food was finished, then, he wiped his mouth and exclaimed that the wine and food were delicious, before praising us for being not bad, then. The old beggar took out an old leather parchment from his breast, cut it into four, and gave one to each of us. When I received mine and was about to look at it, the old beggar took out another small book and threw it over to us casually, after doing so. He lied back down on the rock and ignored us. We were perspiring from nervousness. And as we took out the parchment for a closer look, they were the parchment that you all possess now, but we had no idea how to use it. Thus, we opened the booklet which he threw to us. And the contents made us surprised and overjoyed. Then, we knew that we had just gained a treasure. According to the booklet, the parchment was a map of the treasure trove of a swordsman named Kuda, who lived 300 years ago. And this treasure throw is hidden in the Jujube forest that is currently before us. In the past, Kuda had gotten hold of this treasure map and entered the treasure trove. Then, he found sword manuals and precious pills, trained in isolation for 10 years. Before becoming one of the top heroes in Jianghu, after he completed his training, he did not take out the sword manual and pills, and instead left them here to wait for a new heir to inherit these treasures, honestly. The four of us were so excited then that our hearts boiled, but recalling the time stated. In the book, we then realized that only on the 15th of each year would the entrance to the place be opened up, and thus the four of us calmed down. Sir Yanming looked at the sky which was gradually brightening, and continued, honestly, seeing. This enticing biscuit suddenly dropped from the sky, we were dazed with happiness, however, when we regained our senses, we felt that this was just too good to be true. But the old beggar was still lying on the rock not making any movement. We just waited with our bellies full of curiosity. But we soon realized that the old beggar was not sleeping. He was not even breathing anymore. As we stepped closer for a better view. We realized that he indeed passed away. Thus, we buried him. And then we discussed on a plan to obtain the treasures. However, the time was not ripe yet then. So we returned to our respective factions. And then decide on a better course of action. The next time we met. We had already done our research, and indeed three hundred years before, there was a one-armed swordsman with a very common name, Kuda, whose martial arts was profound, and his personality was upright. There were countless reports then of his heroic acts in Jianghu, but no one knew of his birth and background, and the investigations on his origins and teacher all yield no results. This Kuda would never exchange pointers with his counterparts, citing the reason that his sword was drawn to kill and each blade will only shed blood. In fact, he was not interested in getting famous, so nobody could get an opportunity to spar with him. Nevertheless, according to an account from the number one in Jianghu, Qing Mao sect master, he has seen Kuda's swordplay and felt that his own skills were not as deadly and emotionless. Hearing so, the whole of Jianghu was in a big uproar, and no one would dare to step on Kuda's shoes. However, there were people who wanted to gain fame for themselves and they would request to spar with Kuda, yet they were also rejected because Kuda would hide himself, until one time when he saw the second top martial artist among the unorthodox sex massacre a village, and in a fit of fury killed the evil door. Since then, no one would dare to approach him, 
Fear of giving up their lives, Kuda lived in Yunzhou, which is called Pingyang City, 300 years later, and no bandits would dare misbehave there, actually. What we admire most was not his abilities, or sword technique, Thousand Swords Peak. Being the exception, Sir Yanming smiled towards Ma Xiangyang, we found out that this Kuda actually lived until 120 years old. Ah, the six youngsters who were listening to the story gasped spontaneously. The martial art. Practitioners in Jiang who are no different from ordinary people. They live among bloodshed every day and are susceptible to internal and external injuries when we are young. These injuries do not affect us much, but in our old age they would have severe repercussions on our daily lives unless the person practices a profound inner body technique. Very few people would live past 80 years, not to mention 120, thus. It was indeed miraculous. At this moment, the eyes of the youngsters gleamed, and they all wondered if they could obtain the miraculous pills in the treasure trove. Actually, everyone had the same idea. They had not much interest in the sword manuals, because they could not even finish learning their own sex techniques. When would they have the time to learn a different set of instructions, even if it was a top instruction manual? They would still require years of hard effort in order to truly benefit from it. They all knew that they were no longer young and their meridians have already set even if they were to train again they would require twice the effort to achieve half the results so which idiot would do so instead it would be better to gain some personal advantages and live for another decade with another decade they could enjoy life for 10 more years they could train their martial arts for 10 more years of course if they do find some top instruction manual they could bring it back to their respective factions as a significant contribution and improve their status within, looking around, everyone realized that they all had similar thoughts. Looking at the expressions on the faces of the younger generation around him, Sir Yanming smiled and continued, Thus, us for continued to discuss on how to retrieve the treasure, with the power of our respective factions, and with our interest being sustained by the rewards. We managed to find this Shiren Peak two months ago, finally, as we had agreed upon. Earlier, we only sent second-generation disciples in order to not attract the attention of other sects, because even the first-generation disciples could attract undesired attention. And it will be up to me who do not have any disciples to lead the expedition. Of course, you are all reliable figures within your factions and are part of their future core power. Thus, we have already to let you keep whatever treasure you find later on. At that moment, everyone's spirit soared as they finally Realize why their elders sent them over other disciples, Sir Yanming continued, Now, I am going to say the most important point, how we will be splitting the treasures, upon hearing. Everyone immediately focused their attention and opened their ears, if the treasures can be split equally, then it will be done so, if not, we will split as evenly as we can, and as for the remainders, how do you think we are going to split them up? Everyone was surprised for a moment, this Sir Yanming truly has a sense of humor to think that he is still trying to test his juniors at this point of time. No wonder their respective elders were willing to let him lead them. When Wen Hai rubbed his nose and said, Sir, Jiang who has its own rules, I think it will be better if we compete for the treasures using our martial arts. The rest also tacitly agreed. Sir Yanming continued enigmatically, that was how your elders decided as well. First, we thought of competing through our sword techniques, but... Only Thousand Swords Peak was agreeable. Then, we thought of competing through fist stances, but only Piamiao Sect was agreeable. It was the same case for a competition of leg stances. Thus, we thought of a completion of two out of three rounds. But, your elders were reluctant because that would increase the chances of you all getting hurt, and we ended up having a large quarrel. Finally, I proposed a solution, which settled the matter in one sentence. Can you guess what I said? Everyone had a blank face on. Their eyes were squinted as they thought hard, while Sir Yanming looked on encouragingly. Finally, Zhu King stammered with her face red, L Elder. Could it be through scissors paper stone? After speaking, her whole face flushed red. Sir Yanming exclaimed in surprise, Heroin Zhu is truly astute to be able to guess correctly. Everyone burst out in laughter, but only when Wen Hai's face looked weird. Everyone looked respectfully at this thin-faced elder who despite his illustrious reputation which was as warm-hearted as an elder relative and thought in their hearts, how could there be such a large difference among people? Their own elders would put on a wooden expression every day, when would they see such a relaxed style of instruction, just as everyone was thinking of their own masters, only Sir Yanming saw a silver of sunlight and smacked his forehead, 
saying, quick, to the forest. Do not miss the timing. After he finished his sentence, he ran ahead into the outer perimeter of the forest. At this moment, the early sun rose from the side of the mountain, and a lightning-fast shadow swept over to the other side of the forest, passing through the middle of two trees in the direction of Shirin Peak, Peak, Peak. Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 12, Notify as the first ray of sunlight shone on the Jujube Forest. Jean Xiaohua opened his eyes and sparkling light seemed to appear in the black of his pupils. Jean Xiaohua did not get up immediately like he usually would, but continued to lay on the platform and closed his eyes again. After being slapped until it was swollen, his face did not have the tingling burning sensation of yesterday. And the mouth which was hurt until it was too painful, too. Speak was also feeling fine, while his exterior injuries healed slowly. When would his inner trauma heal? Zhang Xiao was thoughts automatically returned to the events that had happened in the last yester. A afternoon, his father was not in the wrong. When he tried to stop his eldest brother from entering into the fray, one should avoid situations that are out of one's own waters. His eldest brother was also not in the wrong for trying to help. Meeting Lady Liu could be counted as a fated encounter, and even if she was a total stranger, if one were to stand by a side while watching someone else being bullied, then his conscience would suffer an irreversible blow. Thinking of the surrounding spectators, there were so many people, their faces were either wooden with disinterest, excited over someone else's misfortune, or just sympathy, yet did they ever thought of joining in to help? Then he thought back to the two short fat men and the pack of dog-like men servants being arrogant and overbearing, while blatantly committing a crime in daylight, then, he thought back to the scene where his father and two elder brothers were being trampled upon by the goons. Being hit mercilessly by flurries of kicks and punches, perhaps, those goons were not after their lives, but were assaulting them out of pleasure, because seeing fresh blood would raise their excitement, but what if those goons were after their lives? Would his family be able to avoid them? Then he thought back to when, when Hai and his junior sister descending from the sky, defeating those goons as casually as if they were flipping their palms over. They did not even bother to share their names to that Zhao Quansheng person. And with just a few strokes and a plaque, they shut him up and forced the evildoers to repent. A thought shot like electricity through his mind. Martial arts, I need strength, I need martial arts, this time. If they did not meet Wen Wen Hai and his junior sister, if they had not chosen to intervene, then his own family would have been subjected to more beatings and may even lose their lives. Relying on an external help was akin to relying on air. One had to rely on oneself. Only after one had sufficient power would he be able to protect his loved ones while protecting others. Zhang Xiaohua felt as though the knot in his chest which appeared since yesterday has finally loosened. Similar to how he reclaimed that plot of field, with a goal in mind, anything can be done. He does not lack the ability, was not afraid of pain or difficulties, but rather needed directions on how to achieve his goal after deciding on the direction of his life. Zhang Xiaohua no longer wanted to stay in bed, he picked himself up and walked out of his grandmother's room to the welcoming sunlight. However, the excited Zhang Xiaohua was still naively unaware of how difficult the road of a martial artist was. Background, talent, perseverance, opportunity, these were the necessary requirements. But how many youths could reach their goals so easily? Every youth have their own goals, whether or not they succeed or fail. They would have acted on an impulse and would have suffered some setbacks. Everyone has their own road, and only by walking on it would they know if their ideals were right. Zhang Xiaohua was no different. As Zhang Xiaohua walked out of the room, he saw his grandmother at the doorsteps and walked over grandmother. The day is still early, and there is some cold wind blowing outside. Go back into the house, and when it is close to noon, you can come out again to enjoy the sun. Hearing her grandson's voice, his grandmother replied tenderly. Xiaohua, grandmother wants to enjoy more of the air. Outside, I am already living day by day, and do not want to spend my time cooped indoors. What about you? Does your body still hurt? You should go back and sleep a little longer. Zhang Xiaohua said joyfully, Grandmother, I have already recovered. Fully, here, feel my face, it is no longer swollen. Zhang Xiaohua took his grandmother's rough hands and placed them on his face, while his grandmother carefully felt while smiling. Good, good. As long as you are fine, after saying so, she used her sleeves to dab off the tears in her eyes. Her love for her youngest grandson was apparent for anyone to see at the courtyard. 
Gour Soufé was at the stove which was supported by some simple beans making breakfast. While Liu King and Liu Yu were aside assisting her, seemingly happy, however, Liu King seemed to be feeling slightly shy. In fact, Zhang Xiaohua rubbed his eyes when he thought he saw a tinge of flush on Liu King's face. Strange. What is going on? Zhang Xiaohua would not have known that Liu King and Liu Yu have awoken before daybreak because they were not feeling comfortable sleeping over in another place out of their homes, and in order not to awake Gour Soufei. They cuddled closely together and whispered in low voices to discuss yesterday's happenings. Liu Qing was feeling especially grateful to Zhang Xiaolong, because if not for his timely intervention, she would have been dragged into the alleys where her fate would be much worse. Furthermore, Zhang Xiaolong had fractured his own arm while saving the two ladies, and despite being trampled upon and being severely injured, his determination to rescue the ladies was so evident on his face that his was etched deeply into her heart. Not long after, Gur Sufei woke up and eavesdropped on the ladies. Seeing that the sun was about to rise, she coughed a few times and sat up, while the two ladies tensed up immediately. Last night, she was too preoccupied with her family's injuries and did not get the chance to look carefully at the ladies. Now that her family's injuries have somewhat stabilized, she realized that ladies were very pretty and their figures were not bad as well. Even though their heights were different, but there are many different types of beautiful flowers as well. But of course, if they were not attractive, how could they have piqued the interest of those bullies? Next, Zhang Jialong's mother inquired about family circumstances of the two ladies. And she learned that Liu King came from a family of three, her father and elder brother being the other two, and her mother had passed away years ago from an illness. Liu King's father was a scholarly teacher while her elder brother was also pursuing the academia. So their household does not own any farmland and relies on teaching students for a living, and thus has a high reputation in the village. Liu Yu is Liu King's cousin, and her father is a butcher. Being Liu King's father's brother, and they live together. In the same village, Liu Yu is the only child in her family of three. Yesterday, Liu King's family was hosting some visitors, while Liu Yu's father was opening his shop as usual. Thus there was no men to accompany them to town, which resulted in the events yesterday. The three ladies started chatting more comfortably, and Gur Sufei even asked if the two ladies have any engagement to which both said no, although Liu Yu was unaffected. Liu Qin's face turned red, which made Gur Sufei overjoyed beyond words. When the sun was up, Gur Sufei started making breakfast, and the two ladies offered to help. Liu King's face was still flushed from the conversation. Which was why Zhang Xiaohua could pick it up. Zhang Xiaohua walked over to the stove and greeted, Good morning, elder sisters. Even though it was a normal greeting, when Liu Qing picked up the word elder sister, she felt as if the young boy before her could read her mind, and her face flushed redder. Liu? Yu Yu happily replied, Morning, little brother. Zhang Xiaohua asked after his father and elder brothers, and Gu Sufei replied that she had already taken a look and there were not much changes. Their external wounds have recovered to some extent, but they have not fully recovered their energy, and it will be some time before they do. As they were talking, Zhang Kai walked out of the house, his holds being supported by a wooden clutch. As he limped step by step, while his right leg was evidently still hurting, Gor Sufei and Zhang Xiaohua went over to support him. Zhang Xiaohua brought his father a chair and put it at the courtyard. Zhang Kai stretched a little, and he could still feel his waist hurting. Liu Qing and Liu Yuyu went over to give their morning greetings, which Zhang Kai said was unnecessary. You two ladies did not return home last night. I am sure that your family is worried. The men in our family are still injured. And we cannot let Zhang Xiaohua accompany you by himself. Why don't I get Xiaohua and some of the villagers to send a letter to your family to get them to fetch you? Would that be okay? Liu Qing and Liu Yuyu exchanged glances and nodded in agreement. Then, Zhang Kai followed Zhang Xiaohua to the village to find an adult, and the two people went to Baligu to deliver the letter to Liu King and Liu Yuyu's families. Baligu was at the southwest of Gur village, and the distance between the two places was not small. By the time Zhang Xiao reached Baligu, it was already midday. Baligu is located in a ravine, and one could see from afar that it is very big, about four to five times the size of Gur village. There were many more villagers. So when Zhang Xiaohua reached the village entrance, there was already someone who saw him arrive and asked who he was looking for. Zhang Xiaohua replied that he was looking for Teacher Liu which made the man cautious. 
But seeing that Zhang Xiaohua was not very well dressed and was accompanied by an honest looking famer, he asked, Where are you from? Why are you looking for teacher Liu? Zhang Xiaohua replied, We are from Guo village. To pass some news of elder sisters Liu King and Liu Yu to him, the person was overjoyed and he replied, Great, quickly follow me. Then, he led Zhang Xiaohua and the other man through a small path to a tidy courtyard, and before walking through the door, he shouted, Teacher Liu, Butcher Liu, news of your daughters have arrived. Then, a loud voice resounded from the house, Ah, the kidnappers have sent a letter. I am just going to see which fellow is responsible for this, following the voice. A large sturdy man who was at least two heads taller than Zhang Xiaohua walked out and grabbed Zhang. Xiaohua by his collar, saying, Talk, which bandit group are you from? Talk. Zhang Xiaohua was lifted in the air and he was unable to catch his breath, much less answer. Then, another person walked out of the house and said, Second brother, you cannot be so impolite. Look at this boy, his posture, his attire. Do they look like they belong to a bandit? Even if he was one, you would still need to allow him to talk. The strong man smiled and loosened his hands. Big brother, I am just too. Anxious about our daughters, aren't you feeling anxious too? Zhang Xiaohua gulped down some air, and his face gradually turned less blue, looking at the two men. He knew that the large man was Li Yuyu's father, Butcher Liu, and the calm man was Li. King's father, Teacher Liu. Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 13 Entering the forest the person who brought Zhang Xiaohua then spoke up, Butcher Liu has maligned another good person. This little brother had walked all the way from Gore village to bring good news of your daughter. It appears that you have lost control of your emotions again. Butcher Liu did not mind his fellow villagers' words and patted Zhang Xiaohua's shoulders with his large hands and said, Looks like this little brother is magnanimous. Why would he take a such a little joke to heart? Seeing the large palms that were marked with years of experience of slaughtering pigs, he thought in his heart, Of course I do mind. Why don't you lend me some of your guts? i rather not be close to you. My body has only just recovered recently. However, on the outside, he replied politely, How would I dare? This esteemed person must be elder sister Liu Yuyu's father. Since you appear just as majestic as her, and in his heart, he thought as majestic as a bear hearing Zhang Xiaohua's reply, Butcher Liu was so happy that his eyes squinted in joy, saying, Both you and Yuyu sing the same tune, has she all right? How did Yu Yu and King King end up in your village? Are they doing okay? Midway of his sentence, he remembered his daughter. Teacher Liu who was standing at his side said, Let us talk in the house, from this little brother's calm behavior. I am sure that nothing major happened to the girls. After finishing his sentence, he led Zhang Xiaohua and his guide, as well as the fellow villager who brought over the two visitors back towards the house. The fellow villager interrupted, I am not going in. I should be going back now. I can also call Liu Kai to come back on my way. Teacher Liu nodded in gratitude and sent the villager back before inviting Zhang Xiaohua into the house. When Zhang Xiaohua entered the courtyard, he noted that there was not much difference from his own house. It was arranged simply but with less farming tools and the stove area did not seem to be used much. There were two rooms in front and two additional rooms at the sides, which was unexpectedly more than they needed since they were only a family of three, only after he entered. Did he realize his mistake? Upon entering the first room, there was a portrait of a wizened old scholar, and some plates of fruits and snacks before the portrait as though it was an altar. On the left wall was a painting of snow, and some people, under a pavilion enjoying the snow, on the right was some calligraphy, written with much gusto, as the characters were cursive and full of expressions. Unfortunately Zhang Xiaohua could not recognize the words, when Zhao Xiaohua realized the stark. Differences between this house and his own home, he thought in his heart, is this the difference between an educated person and a farmer's home, under the housekeeping of his mother? His home remained clean and tidy, and there were also a hanging on the wall, but it was just a picture of a deity, and his mother did not even bother to put flowers for worship. Zhang Xiaohua was struck with a sudden thought. If elder sister Liu took over the housekeeping, what could become of our house, these? Thoughts ran through Zhang Xiaohua's mind as he stood silently on the spot, but it was not because he had lost his bearings, but rather, he was unsure of where to sit. There were only a few chairs at his house, and they would usually stand at home. But this teacher has so many chairs in his house, he is sure to be fastidious about manners, and thus, Zhang Xiaohua did not dare to sit anywhere, upon seeing Zhang Xiaohua's discomfort. 
Teacher Liu immediately brought Zhang Xiaohua and his fellow villager to be seated. Then, Butcher Liu took out a kettle of tea to serve to their guests. Zhang Xiaohua took the cup and poured the contents into his mouth. The water had a rather nice taste. When Butcher Liu saw that he emptied his cup, he immediately refilled the cup. Zhang Xiaohua and the fellow had been walking for the whole morning and were already feeling thirsty, put together the fact that the tea tasted so good. The two men finished for cups of tea at a go. Butcher leaves. Expression then softened. Even though he is boorish, he could tell that his visitors have traveled from far away to the point of such thirst just to share the news of their daughter's safety. After Zhang Xiaohua finished his cup of tea and was about to speak, he heard urgent footsteps coming from outside the house, and not long later, he saw a youth scholar whose height was similar to his eldest brother run into the room and guessed that he must be Liu King's elder brother, Liu Kai. When Liu Kai entered the house, he first greeted Teacher Liu and Butcher Liu, and who then introduced Zhang Xiaohua and the fellow villager to him. When Liu Kai greeted Zhang Xiaohua, the latter was unsure of how to return the greetings, so he made a little effort to do it. Only after then, Liu Kai turned towards Teacher Liu and asked, Where is younger sister? When Zhang Xiaohua looked at this youth who was obviously much skinnier than his eldest brother, he sighed in his heart, sigh, learn people. Sure have many unnecessary customs, this elder brother Liu sure has patience to finish his greetings before asking any questions. If it was Butcher Liu, he would have asked the moment he entered. Right, the latter must be thinking that this elder brother Liu has arrived at a poor time. Zhang Xiaohua could not help but turn to see Butcher Liu who was still waiting anxiously for Zhang Xiaohua's explanation. Indeed. Before Teacher Liu could speak, Butcher Liu interrupted. Why don't you take a sip first? This little brother has not even spoken up when you arrive. Liu Kai then took the seat opposite Zhang Xiaohua and drank his water slowly as he looked at Zhang Xiaohua. Waiting for his reply, Zhang Xiaohua then introduced himself. Before narrating the previous day's events in a detailed way, but out of caution, he did not reveal the total amount of compensation from the bullies. Zhang Xiaohua was not eloquent with his words. And his story was in bits and pieces. However, even so, the four men in the room felt as though their hearts were going to jump out of their mouths. Teacher Liu, Butcher Liu, and Liu Kai's faces were as pale as ash. Butcher Liu even stood up from his chair on several occasions, but he was persuaded back to his seat by Teacher Liu at these times, after Zhang Xiaohua finished his story, Butcher Liu immediately poured two cups of water for Zhang Xiaohua. And the rest of the audience also drank a cup of water, as it seems that not only was the storyteller thirsty from speaking, his listeners felt their throats parching from anxiety, after everyone had relieved their thirst. Teacher Liu walked to Zhang Xiaohua's front and took a deep bow saying this old man sincerely expresses his gratitude to your father and his sons for saving his daughter, Liu Kai and Butcher Liu also scrambled quickly to bow, which shocked Zhang Xiaohua out of his chair, stammering that he could not dare to accept their bows, and worriedly returned the bows. Zhang Xiaohua comforted them and said, Elder sisters Liu are currently resting at my house and are all right now. You do not need to worry. Actually, everyone was already aware that their loved ones are safe, but still could not fully calm down until they see them personally, until everyone was seated again. Teacher Liu said, Xiaohua has walked the whole morning to reach here from Gore village. It seems that we will not be able to bring our children back today. Why not second brother first? Return home and let your wife prepare some lunch for Zhang Xiaohua and his fellow villager, and let them have their meal first before returning to Gore village with Liu Kai. Then, we can fetch our children together tomorrow. What do you think? Butcher Liu replied, No, it is better if I head off first. I am still unsettled and part of the return journey back to Gore village will be in night time, so it will be safer if I accompany them. Teacher Liu deliberated shortly and agreed thus. Lunch was at Butcher Liu's place, Liu King was not around so there was no one to prepare food at Teacher Liu's home, since Liu Yu's mother knew that her daughter was safe. She made an extravagant meal to thank her family's benefactors, Zhang. Xiaohua was already feeling hungry, and coupled with the fact that he has not eaten red roast meat in a long while, he filled his tummy to the brim. After the meal, Zhang Xiaohua, the fellow Gore villager and Butcher Liu hurried towards Gore village. Without stop, and few hundred li away was a different scene at Five Claw Peak. In the morning, when the shadow passed between two trees, Sir Yaming shot his body through the forest. Luckily, he was an experienced martial artist with very sharp eyesight. Otherwise, it could have been easy to miss the opportunity 
While the rest had not figured out what was going on, they only stared as Sir Yanming sped ahead. Sir Yanming was not angry. And he raised his voice, aren't you guys coming, when? Everyone reached these the spot of the two trees and observed their surroundings. They could not feel any difference between this area and the rest of the Jujube forest. Sir Yanming laughed. There is no need to look any further. There won't be any visible difference. Otherwise, we would not need to go through all these troubles. Now that we are ready to enter the forest, you should take out that leather parchment. The few people followed his instructions and took the parchment out. While Sir Yanming continued, dripped some blood at the top of the back of the parchment. Then, he took out a dagger and cut his finger, rubbing his blood on the parchment. Ma Xiang Ye. When Wen Hai and Tan Wen followed suit, and they noticed traces of words appear on the parchment, the words read, Walk ten trees straight ahead, walk back six trees, walk left six trees, and walk right eight trees. Sir Yanming then pieced the words from the four parchment together and read out the instructions. Sir, Yanming said, all right, everyone should prepare themselves. When we are traveling through the forest, I shall lead from the front, followed by Hiro Ma and Hiro Wen. Hiro and Zhu and Sect Master Shidu will be in the middle, and the Tan brothers at the back. Everyone should put up their guard, move according to how the situation flows, and not lose the formation. The Jujube forest in front of them was no longer covered by the darkness of the night, however. The bright rays of sunlight still could not penetrate through the thick canopy, and there was dense mist among the trees, and despite the blowing of the cold winds, the mist did not dissipate. Sir Yanming took out his dagger and made a mark at the two Jujube trees, before carefully treading between the trees, while the rest of the group followed closely behind in formation. The forest mist was so thick that one could not see more than 10 meters ahead. And it was so humid that everyone was wet with perspiration not long after. To preempt any danger, everyone had brought out their weapons, and they started to feel the chill pervade their bodies. It has been many years since someone last entered the forest. And the ground was covered in a dense cover of decomposing leaves. Thus, walking across the forest floor was energy consuming and the jujube trees which were tightly spaced together frequently became an obstacle to the large-sized party. Nevertheless, no one dared to cut the trees down in fear of provoking more danger. Just as everyone was walking in the orderly formation, they heard Shitu Ping squeal. Look over there. There, 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 there. Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 14. Dense vegetation, everyone in the party turned towards the direction of Shitu Ping's surprised gaze, and indeed, about four to five meters away was a skeleton leaning against a jujube tree, its empty sockets looking towards the direction of the party. Everyone felt their hair stood, and they tightened the grip on their weapons. By rights, Shitu Ping was a woman of the Jianghu, and has encountered her fair share of battles and bloodshed, and should have a wealth of experience of killing, so how could she been frightened off by a mere skeleton? However, given the reputation of the forest, as well as the dense mist which blocked off most vision, Coupled with the cold weather made her lose. Her bearings and shrieked in surprise, Sir Yanming and the party stopped in their tracks, observed their surroundings again, and seeing no movement from the skeleton, they continued in their tracks. Shi Ping felt embarrassed, but no one blamed her, because they knew that it was easy to lose control of their emotions in such an uncertain environment, and thus could sympathize with her. As they continued to walk in formation deeper into the forest, they gradually began to see more skeletons, some even obstructed their path, but everyone did not dare to circumvent from their path and instead chose to walk straight though, there were many human skeletons. But most of the remains belonged to different types of animals, there must have been many animals in the mountains which had accidentally ventured into this mysterious danger zone, lost their path and never came out, thinking of these unfortunate beings. The expedition party was conscious of being more careful, and they have long dispelled any notions of adventuring by themselves. After all, these people were handpicked by the respective faction elders and their hearts that are stronger than most. Thus would not risk their lives to fulfill their own curiosity. The forest seemed never ending, and even after walking for half a day, there were still no changes to the scenery, and if not for the appearance of more skeletons, everyone would have thought that they have gotten lost. Fortunately, they have not met with any incidents on their path so far, so they have calmed their nerves, while wishing to head on faster and leave the forest earlier, after walking for a long time with their guards up. Shitu Ping, who was in the middle and had the luxury of being less alert, started to wonder if the people around here were getting mentally tired. Fierce Tiger Sect had laid its foundations in Lutown, 
and Five Claw Peak was within the boundaries of their influence. Even though they were fearful of this restricted area, now that she has experienced it personally, wouldn't it be like their own personal backyard in the future, however? The four factions who were represented by the people around her were much more powerful. Would they have any interests in this? Forest, what if she is abandoned after outliving her usefulness? Her life could even be forfeited then, just as Shituping was running these thoughts through her head. Her foot suddenly got caught on a tree root and she fell towards her right, and... Coincidentally at this moment, they were approaching the outer perimeter of two trees, Shituping felt her body lost its balance and threw a kick into the air to keep her body upright. Thus landing steadily back onto the ground, however, the area she landed on was already out of the perimeter of the two trees, and she jumped up a branch and stood beside its trunk, looking ahead, seeing the sudden turn of the events, Sir Yanming, Ma Xiangyang and Wen Wenhai all turned their bodies towards Shitu, Ping, and as Ma Xiangyang stared at the tree root on the ground, his eyes turned bitter, everyone was waiting for Shitu Ping to get down from the tree, but then, something unexpected occurred. Shitu Ping turned 360 degrees, and as her eyes glazed past the rest of the party, she ignored them as if they were not there, an expression of horror appeared on her face as she looked around frantically. Raising her feet yet unhesitant to move from her spot, her mouth was opened as if she was shouting to get their attention, but none of the party could hear any sound. Observing the situation, Sir Yanming used the voice transmission technique on Shitu Ping and asked can you hear me, not if you do. At his moment, an expression of unbridled joy appeared on Shitu Ping's face, and she nodded like a chit pecking furiously on a floor of grains. Sir Yanming continued to transmit turn left and stop until I tell you to. Shitu Ping nodded again and followed Sir Yanming's directions which led her to walk towards the party. After four to five steps, at the spot where the two trees meet, Shitu Ping's eyes brightened because she finally found her way back to the party. Sir Yanming did not inquire on the reason of her fall, but rather, he asked what did you see earlier? Shitu Ping answered with hesitation when I stood up, I still saw a forest of jujube trees, but I lost sight of you. And there was no reply when I shouted, if you had not spoken to me, I would have walked around to look for everyone instead. Sir Yanming wrinkled his brows in deep thought. While Ma Xiangyang smiled towards Shitu Ping, assistant head Shitu should be careful when she walks in T. He future, one slip could lead to the loss of Life, and the business in Lu Town would have to be passed over to someone else, so please take care. Sichu Ping lowered her head and said Gentleman Ma, I understand. I will be more careful from now on. For the remainder of the route, everyone kept their vigilance even higher, knowing that the forest was not as peaceful as it appears to be. With a moment of carelessness, one could land himself in a life-threatening situation and lose their life at this very forest. Shitu Ping was unaware, but... Everyone else knew that shouting was ineffective, and only the voice transmission technique could be used to communicate, except that not anybody would be able to perform the technique. And rather than to rely on your comrades, it was better to be careful in the first place, after walking for about four to five incense stick worth of time. The number of skeletons gradually decreased, and the mystical fog also thinned. As they approached the perimeter of the forest, indeed, not long after, they could see sunlight, but Sir Yunming continued to lead the party towards the exit as instructed, without lightening up his guard. There was no further accident. And the line of people finally crossed the last tree and walked out of the forest safely. What welcomed them was a sight that left them dazed. In front of them was a field in the bloom of spring. The field was not large, but there was a lake in the middle. And white steam was surrounding the lake. There was also a house cut from stone by the lake, and the areas around the house were fields of vegetation although they could not see the details from afar, under the leadership of Sir Yanming. They walked across this patch of land where no one has crossed in a few hundred years, sir. Yanming then told everyone, according to the booklet, there is no more danger after we entered the secret area, so everyone can lower their guard. However, just to be safe, I propose that we stick together, so I would prefer if you all followed me. After finishing his sentence, he led the way towards the lake. When everyone reached the lakeside, a hot rush of air gushed over, and many bubbles were visible on the surface of the lake. Sir Yanming stooped down and took a piece of tree branch and led it into the lake, seeing no reaction, and wondering how to test the temperature of the lake, he walked up and took out an egg from his breast, smiling I like eating raw eggs. But there were some leftovers from yesterday, this would be suitable. To test the temperature of the water, 
Then, he took a piece of cloth and wrapped the egg in it, put it into the lake before taking it out soon after, and as expected, it was already fully cooked. Thus, everyone threw out the idea of exploring within the lake. It seemed that the unusually warm weather here has something to do with this lake. Everyone walked along the side of the lake towards the stone house. As they all thought that the precious treasure should be inside, after walking half of the lake's circumference and not encountering any event or danger, everyone started to calm down as the booklet appeared to be accurate. There were medicinal fields surrounding the stone house. Most of the herbs were unrecognizable because none were specialized in medicine, but they could still pick up the more renowned type of herbs such as chanki, ginseng, baimu, golden sunflower, etc. Although these herbs are not uncommon in the outside world, the secret area has been left alone for at least 300 years, so the value of the herbs must have risen with their age, not to mention those nameless pills, they were probably consumed many years ago. Just based on the value of this medicinal field, it was already worth their effort. To come, thus, everyone looked blankly at the precious herbs before them, as they thought of how they could bring them back with them. Sir Yanming wrinkled his brows and said to everyone, I did not expect there to be such valuable herbs here. This is truly out of my expectations. Since we are not sure on how to transport them out, let us head towards the stone house for now. After we are done, we can then think of an idea to overcome this obstacle. We do not have to be worried. Since these herbs do not have legs or wings to escape. Everyone chuckled as they followed Sir Yanming into the house. The house was ordinary and so simple in design that it did not have a front door. Sir Yanming walked to the entrance, not daring to enter, despite the booklet writing that there was no longer any danger within this secret area. Pondering for a moment, he picked up a stone and threw it inside. Strained his ears, but he could only hear the plop sound of the stone landing on the floor, only. Then, did Sir Yanming enter, with his hands holding on to his dagger, while the rest followed him inside? The stone house looked small from the outside, but when they entered, they realized that there was quite a lot of floor space, similar to hall, and not like a normal living quarter which they expected. The floor was not dusty from centuries of neglect, rather, it was clean because the wind could blow through the doorless entrance to sweep up the particles. The hall was facing smooth blank wall, but... It felt as though there should be something hanging on the wall or any other object. There was a square table and a shelf. On the shelf was an incense burner. And further from the burner were many small boxes. And on the table below the shelf were four rectangular silver boxes with antique designs. There were three tables on two sides of the table which were untidily placed. And there were even futons on each chair. There was nothing on the wall at the left but a hole which should have served. As a window, whereas there were three hangings on the right wall, the first picture was of a brocaded robed man holding a sword rushing forward. The second was of a scholar with a sword around his waist walking. And the last was a lady with white powder on her face, a whip in her hands as she stands on the side of a bridge. The three pictures have faded with age, so their details could not really be mapped out. And there were no traces of words to explain the pictures, so no one could tell if Either of the pictures were of the single armed swordsman. 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 Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 15. Treasure After Searching the Entire Hall. Everyone set their sights on the four silver boxes on the table and the flat box on the shelf. They were clear in their hearts that the purpose of the expedition was to obtain those treasures that were currently in front of them. However, they still had some misgivings in their heart because of how coincidental the situation turned out to be. They were for silver boxes, which was the same number of factions. They represented, if one party had gone missing in the forest, would there be one less box on the table? After deliberating for a while, they felt that it was unlikely. Because these boxes had been at the same position for at least 300 years, why would they appear or disappear without any reason? Sir Yanming continued his cautious streak. He did not choose to open the box immediately when he reached the table. Rather, he searched left and right then took his dagger and knocked on the chairs and even flicked the futons off before pointing his dagger at the position of the boxes, despite having not observed any movements. He was still unsettled and walked over to the wall on the right to pull off the three paintings. But he still could not discover any traps. Then, he walked up to the front of the table and faced everyone there do not seem to be any traps around. What do you guys think? The rest of the party had been following Sir Yanming's lead throughout the expedition, and since entering the hall, they did not dare to move from their position, 
there was a well-known story in Jianghu, which turned into a myth in their generation. That there exist some formations experts who could set up traps with just some pieces of bamboos and stones. Add that to the fact that the whole Jujube forest was a large-scale formation. What is not to say that a formation expert has come to this area hundreds of years ago? They had been frightened since the beginning, and already chose to obey their elders' instructions to follow Sir Yanming. Now that the latter had asked for their opinions, what else could they do? Thus, they nodded their heads in agreement. Sir Yanming was pleased with their attitudes, and laughed Jiang who is an unpredictable place, it is better to be cautious. Why don't you all look around to find any other traps in this hall, if you were fated to encounter any benefits? Then it shall be yours to keep. The rest of the party turned and looked at each other before scattering around the hall to search for clues. In their hearts, they had some suspicions. Would this Sir Yanming have any selfish intentions? Would he switch the boxes? However, the hall was spacious enough for everyone's actions to be visible, so they were not afraid of anyone making any sneak attempts. Perhaps this elder truly was concerned for the safety for the younger generation. And there was also no loss on their part to be more careful. After seeing everyone returned from their investigation, Sir Yanming cleared his throat and said following our earlier agreement, each faction shall claim a box for themselves. Even though Shitu Ping belongs to the fierce tiger sect, but she can be counted as part of Hiroma's team and not as a separate faction, does assistant sect head Shitu have any objections to this? Shitu Ping replied calmly, I do not. Indeed, how would she dare to object? Her life was saved by the rest just now. Sir Yanming continued then, we shall follow the position of the map parchments, starting from left to right and top to bottom. Each of us will take a box, and whatever we manage to obtain will be left to fate. Saying which, he stood to the side of the table. As per order, the first to take a box should have been Sir Yanming, when Wen Hai deliberated, and then walked up front, he carefully observed the four identical boxes. And having spotted no differences and a layer of dust above, he pondered and then took the second box from the left. Just as he was about to open the box, Sir Yanming stopped him and said there must be some treasures in the boxes, since there are exactly four boxes. One for each person. Everyone should take one box as a reward for their accomplishment. If the boxes contain different items, then we may not be able to avoid some conflict, so what do everyone say if we were to keep the contents of the boxes a mystery for now? Everyone nodded in approval, so when Wen Hai kept the box in his breast and went back to his original position, the next person was Thousand Swords Peaks Ma Xiang Yang, followed by Sir Yanming, the last being Tan Wu who simply took up the last box. Nobody opened their box and kept them in their breast instead. After the distribution, everyone's sights landed on the flat box on the shelf, Sir Yanming walked to the far end of the shelf to pick up the box and felt it while a puzzled look spread across his face. From his observation, it felt as if the box was carved of stone and the box was meant to store treasures, yet he could not guess why it was not on the table and left on the shelf instead. Sir Yanming carried the box and walked over to the table, showing the box to everyone. Before placing it on the table and looking at everyone's reactions, then he said the only object left in the house is this box, but we cannot share it equally. Shall we use the method we discussed before, to play scissors paper stone to decide its owner? Everyone looked at each other, their hearts feeling surprised. As members of Jianghu, they were going to follow such a childish method to decide such an important matter. However, towards such a precious treasure, everyone will be willing to fight through their teeth, and who knows if the fishermen would gain in the fight between the clown and stork. Hence, they were not willing to take the risk to fight. Just as everyone decided in their hearts to follow their previous agreement, Ma Xiang Yang said to Sir Yanming Elder, I have a suggestion. Sir Yanming looked surprised as he said, Hero Ma, please share it with us. Ma Xiang Yang continued, I am agreeable with playing scissors paper stone to determine the owner, but I have a small request, which is for no matter whom to win to open the box for us to see its contents. What does everybody think of this proposal? Sir Yanming pondered and nodded in acknowledgement. The other people were also feeling the same way, in their hearts, while they could bring back their own silver box to check its contents, they may not be the eventual owner of the flat box, and thus would want to take a good look at whatever they were missing out on, then. Sir Yanming arranged the order for the people to play the fist game, and eventually, it followed the same order as when they chose their silver box, with Piao Miao and Thousand Swords Peak playing together, and Sir Yanming and the Tan family in the second game. Piamiao's sect, when 
Wen Hai glanced at Zhu King and nodded towards her. An encouraging smile appeared on his face, but it was coupled with a tinge of embarrassment. Zhu King then walked up to the side of the table. Because she knew the reason for her senior brothers. Embarrassment. He has lost every scissors paper stone game no matter who he was played with. Thousand Swords Peak only had one representative, so Ma Xiang Yang walked up and stood aside Zhu King. Naturally, he was reluctant to let Shitu Ping play, and even if he was willing, Shitu Ping would not have dared to do so. Seeing the two people walked forward, Sir Yaming said the rules should be familiar to you all. Scissors beats paper. Paper beats stone, and stone beats scissors. Before we begin, I will require the players to blindfold themselves and wait for my count before they show their hand. Only after then will the player be allowed to take off his blindfold to check the results. In the first match between Zhu King and Ma Xiangyang, they both threw out scissors, but in the second round, Zhu King threw out scissors while Ma Xiangyang threw out paper. Thus, when Ma Xiangyang took off his blindfold, a dejected expression formed over his face. The match between Sir Yanming and Tan, when only lasted a round, with Sir Yanming triumphing with stone, the last match was also the most important game, and this time, Sir Yanming was in deep though as the two players blindfolded themselves on Ma Xiangyang's count. They both threw out scissors in the first game, seeing the tie, both players blindfolded themselves again, and when they realized that they tied with scissors again, Sir Yanming became frantic. In fact, Sir Yanming had his own ulterior motives when he chose the game. He had always been good in these types of guessing games that require outwitting the opponent. However, at this moment, he realized that his opponent was also an expert. And his heart grew even more frantic. Unfortunately, in the third round, he threw out paper while Zhu King stuck with her choice and won the match. Needless to say, Zhu King was overjoyed, and as when Wen Hai took the box to open, Sir Yanming stopped him and said hold on. Just to be cautious, use your sword and open it from afar. When Wen Hai followed the elder's advice and placed the box onto the table, before using his sword to pry it from afar, however, he was unable to find the lid of the box. And when he picked it up again, he realized that the box was sealed. He then tried to break it off using his strength, and everyone else tried after he failed. Sir Yanming even ignored the look of Wen Wen Hai's face as he used his dagger to stab the box. But the dagger did not even leave a mark. It finally dawned on him. Why? The previous occupant left the box aside at the far end of the shelf. Then, Sir Yanming casually returned the box to Wen Wen Hai who carefully put it into his breast. Seeing that there was no more objects in the house, everyone's thoughts returned to the medicinal fields outside. Sir Yanming led the party out and said we did not prepare sufficiently and hence are unable to transport all the herbs here. I suggest that we harvest the matured herbs now and split them into four portions, with each faction taking one portion, and as for the herb sprouts, we can leave them here while our factions rediscuss their distribution. What do you all think? No one had any objection. So under Sir Yanming's direction, the medicinal fields were harvested, one after another, and the herbs were then split into four portions and placed into four cloth bags for each of the faction. Finally, Sir Yanming said since none of us had any fortunate encounter, we can only console ourselves with these herbs. Those herbs in the cloth bags are meant for our factions to use, whereas for now, we can each pick three mature herbs for ourselves, saying which. Sir Yanming led the party to walk across the fields again, and because none were well versed with medicine, they all picked out some stalks of the more renowned herbs like ginseng, chanki, etc. After they were done, the sunlight appeared to fade slightly which probably signaled that midday has passed. Everyone then thought of leaving this secret area, and since they took a long while to reach this place, wouldn't it be dark by the time they finally leave? Sir Yanding smiled to leave this place. We can casually choose a route and keep walking on in the same direction. However, from the sky, I estimate that night is coming soon so we should better leave immediately. Thus, everyone packed their belongings. And they then followed behind Sir Yanming and walked past the two jujube trees and left the secret area, unknown to the party. Just as they left the secret area, a snake-like beast head emerged from the hot spring lake and looked towards their direction. Before, before, before.